It's time for Net at Night, episode 159. I'm Leo Laporte. Amber MacArthur is here with a little bit of a cold from Prince Edward Island. Coming up, we're going to find out if we have enough clout to get the guy from clout.com. Net at Night is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to Net at Night and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Net at Night with Amber MacArthur and Leo Laporte. Episode 159, recorded July 13th, 2010. I'm on the net. Net at Night is brought to you by GoToMeeting, the affordable way to meet with clients and colleagues. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash night. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash night. It's time for Net at Night from Petaluma, California. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Amber MacArthur from Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. Ah, it must be summertime. Yes, it is. Amber's uh, annual pilgrimage to PEI. <laughs> It's true. I just arrived here last night and I've been up since five in the morning because Regis and Kelly have brought the show here all week. So they're broadcasting live. Oh, fun. So Are you going to be on? No, I'm not on, but uh, we just got media passes and went this morning and have been up since the crack of dawn. It was really fun, and they're promoting PEI and uh, beautiful scenery. And I'm so sorry I didn't know because I would have had got you on the show for sure. I know that would have been good, oh, but that's okay. Maybe I they'll come back. <laughs> yeah, because, of course, they, they asked me like monthly to be on the show, and it's just too hard for me to do. I used to do it. I've done it dozens of times, but I... Yeah. Um, you know, you have to go to New York. You have to take a day flying, a day rehearsal, and a day on the air. It takes three minimum of three days out of your schedule. And as you know, oh, yeah. I don't have three days to take out of my schedule. So It's pretty intense. I mean, just watching the show and seeing how they put it together and all the work that goes into it. And um, especially, I, I can imagine, you know, doing the show live and bringing their whole crew up here. It was quite a production. So uh, it was fun to watch and uh, fun to see them promote Prince Edward Island. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Wow. Yeah. And Gelman is uh, quite a force, their producer there. Did you get a chance to watch him at work yeah yeah i watched him at he's work he's really and, involved you know, isn't he he's really involved and yeah. he was responsible for approving all the press i mean we went right to a woman and and, and put in our request for a media pass and then that went to another woman and then it had to go through gelman i mean oh, yeah. he reviews everything oh yeah every there, there's a guy for uh, tourism pei who is tweeting and and doing all the social media stuff from location and all the pictures he takes behind the scenes have to they have to go through gelman and the the team to be approved i mean it, it's hardcore <laughs> he's a good producer i mean he's a guy who has his uh fingers in every piece of the pie he completely oversees that show and and he has a huge commitment to quality and as a result it's a very high quality show i mean you know when yeah. i go on there the, the reason it takes three days is day, day there's a full day of rehearsal. You go in, you line up all the products, and you, they always want at least 40 different products because, you know, I do gadget reviews. Yeah. And I'll line them all up on tables, have them ready, and then when they're, when they're all ready, they say, okay, we'll call up to Gelman. And Gelman comes down, and he goes through. You do the demos, and he says, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And he gets down to about 12, of which you have wow. two minutes to demo. Uh, and you have to call all the companies and say, um, I'm sorry, Michael said no. And then he's great because he'll say, um, you're going to demonstrate this. How is this going to work? I brought one year, I brought a toilet nightlight that, <laughs> that is green when the seat is down, red when the okay. seat is up, but puts a target on the water, all this stuff. And, uh, Gelman says, well, where's the toilet? I said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, we can't, you got to demo this. And the stagehands got a toilet. They put water in it, the whole thing, on the set. And that's Gelman. And I have to say, uh, when you see a producer with that kind of commitment to going the extra mile, that's why that show succeeds. For people who are not in the U.S., this is a, a show that's on 9 a.m. Monday through Friday live, which is uh, something most of the time you don't see anymore. 
Oh, and, and the amount of work they did when they were here. I mean, they shot all these skits on the weekend. They did a clam bake. They did all of this produced footage for the show. And just the effort that went into that. I mean, um, it was pretty phenomenal yeah. to see such a, a yeah. you know, a major broadcast come to the it's island. It's fun. Oh, how fun. I'm yeah, so glad they fun. did that. How yeah, did that happen, really I wonder? Well, the province of Prince Edward Island actually paid them $1 million <gasps> to have shows here uh but they've already they've said already that they have gotten their money's worth and moreover i mean leo yesterday prince Edward on was the second most google uh, googled item um in the world so uh pretty phenomenal as what? far as the attention it's getting the yeah second, that just shows you the power maybe i should get back on that show because one of the reasons i the other reason i stopped doing it is that i didn't feel like it drove a lot of traffic to the radio show or the uh, or the podcast but if it drives Google traffic these days, then it must. Oh, it is. And I mean, it, what's really funny, too, is that the whole show, you know, just watching it today, I mean, Kelly's talking about being on Twitter. She's posting all these behind-the-scenes mm. photos. They're doing so much more, and it seems like they're really trying to connect with an online audience. So I wonder if it would be very different for you, you know, even a couple that. years later. Mm. Um, it, it just seems like there's more integration with kind of the online world. I might be going back. It's fun to back. do. I love doing it. I mean, it really is fun. And Regis and Kelly, the hosts of the show, are both just wonderful. And Regis has been doing this for 50 years. I mean, he's he's at an institution in uh, the States. And, uh, oh, yeah. Really quite he was character. hilarious. I guess he yeah. doesn't like seafood. I mean, they were trying to feed him seafood the whole time he was here. And even live on the air this morning, they're trying to get him to eat oysters. And he was just having nothing to do with it. I mean, <laughs> he's hilarious. He's got great little one-liners. Yeah. They, uh, they, uh, they know how to do it. So coming up, we're going to talk about clout. What is clout? Uh, Quote is an online reputation management service that is based in San Francisco. And the reason I wanted to have them on the show is I've been hearing a lot more about them. I mean, I don't use the service on a regular basis, but uh, they're becoming very popular. And I first uh, really started to pay attention to them just recently when they gave a bunch of people in Toronto free tickets on Virgin America uh, based on them basically having an influence on Twitter and other social networking Holy sites. Holy cow. Yeah, so I know a ton of people who got free tickets and there are companies who are using them right now to determine what bloggers they should reach out to or people, other people online. And um, it's uh, it seems like a pretty cool service and uh, one that's just going to get more popular in the so, future. So I'm going to enter in Amber Mac and I'm going to click go and it's going to tell me what your cloud is, your influence. Your exactly. cloud score is 62. Is that good? That's yep. pretty high. That, that's it? okay. It's, it's pretty good. I think you're it in says, the 70s. It says you're a tastemaker. So, yes. and then it shows creating, sharing, casual, consistent. That's interesting. And who's influencing you, Chris Dick? Well, that makes sense, your partner. Yeah. Uh, Andy Walker, our, our mutual co-host. And then you influence Steve in the UK. <laughs> this hilarious. is interesting. Now, it's a really controversial topic because, as Mr. Tweet told us some about a year and a half, two years ago, influence is very difficult to measure. He said... Uh, I'm highly influenced by my daughter, my, my eight-year-old daughter. But that doesn't mean she has any influence in the real world. So oh, I know. an influencer to you might not be an influencer to anybody else. Yeah, and what kind of amazes me with Cloud is how many big brands are going to them. I mean, it seems like, you know, uh, when we were talking to um, Mr. Tweet, it was, it was interesting and kind of a cool service, but it seems like the founders of Cloud have a legitimate legitimate business here and uh, are getting tons of attention for what they're trying to do. And I'm really curious about how they actually measure things in the, you know, in the back end. And um, I think it'll be fun to have a conversation with their CEO and co-founder about that. Joe Fernandez will be joining us in just a little bit. Before we do that, let's get some links as always all right and, night. and leo i have to apologize to our apologize to our listeners if i sound funny i have a cold you still sound a little stuffed up i must say i'm not drunk just for the record <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a cold, but I'll get over it. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess I'm hungry because uh, I, I came across this article about Ben and Jerry's uh, great ice cream. They are exploring an augmented reality app. So they've actually created this application. And I love augmented reality. I think it's so cool. Describe it. What is that? You no, know, it's such a hard thing to describe, but here's the example I always use with people. Imagine you're walking down the street with your iPhone, you turn the camera on, and then you are pointing it at a, a, a restaurant. And all of a sudden, there's like this layer that appears over your screen that has like interactive information. Maybe it's reviews or you can click on them and go out to the restaurant website, whatever it might be. Or an even more common thing is um, a, a QR code or a code on something that brings you to a destination online based on just scanning your phone 
or your camera on top of that specific code. So Yelp, uh, so Yelp does this. I mean, I have Yelp here in the Yelp monocle um, feature, which now they've actually made uh, public. That before they didn't make monocle, you know, it was a secret feature. But if yeah. you if you tap the monocle button on Yelp, where is it? Oh, maybe I maybe I lied. Uh, Used to. They definitely do it. I've read about yeah. this before. Yeah. Well, where'd it go? Maybe they maybe they mm -hmm. took it out. Uh, nearby, about me. So the idea was it would pull up a picture of what you're seeing on the screen. There it is. It's a hidden button. So now this is what I'm seeing on the screen on the uh, camera as soon as it opens it up, and then it will show you. Oh, now it's confused about my compass. Let me fix that. So now it shows me as I'm looking around. You see up in the upper right hand corner, there's there's. There's things, and if I point my phone, there you go. There, there's a. Well, you can't quite see it because as I point my phone, I'm taking it out of the camera. But there is a restaurant that I'm pointing yeah. it at, and I can go get a review of the restaurant, Sugo Trattoria. Oh yeah, I was pointing it at there. So that's pretty cool. So with phones that have GPSs really cool. and compasses now, a uh, a browser can figure out you know what you're looking at with the phone and tell you. Uh, whether, you know, give you a review, for instance, on Yelp. Yeah. It's really neat. And it, I think it's kind of interesting what uh, Ben & Jerry's is doing. I didn't realize this. I read a little bit more about the company in general, and I guess they really support small farms and get a lot of their ingredients from small farms. And one of the things they're doing with their application, which is called Moo Vision, which is quite a cute name <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for this uh, AR app, is that on the lids of uh, certain types of flavors of Ben & Jerry's ice cream, you can scan them with your... Uh, your uh, AR reader, and then you'll get virtual scenery from small farms. <laughs> and so they're really promoting the idea that they, you know, they support these small farms, and then I guess you can unlock tokens. And, and so this is a people. gimmick. I mean, there's no value to it. No, not necessarily, but I think there's potential. I mean, anything, and at least with technology, anything that I think has starts out um, and, and is kind of new and an innovative way of doing things, it's always kind of gimmicky. People haven't really found their legs and figured out how to make it that useful, but I think the future of AR is definitely useful, uh, especially with teaching kids how to do things or helping with learning in the classroom. I think that's kind of an exciting space. Yeah, I haven't, I mean, I think the Yelp thing is, is it has, you know, there's a high cool factor, but I have yet to see an, a, an augmented reality app that makes me, you know, say, oh, I got to have this. I mean, in a way, oh. this is a heads up display like military fighter pilots have. And of course, that's pretty useful. Well, Leo, I will get this guy on the show. Um, his name is Oro. I, I can't remember his last name, but he runs an AR gaming company in New York. And uh, he specializes in learning for kids or teaching kids oh. how to do things through AR apps. And I have had a chance to interview him. And he showed me this game. I won't go into too many details, but uh, it was about teaching kids how to spell uh, through using an AR application. And it is phenomenal. So we'll get him on the show. And I think all of a sudden, you'll be blown away at uh, the level of it interactivity and you picture like gaming for young kids instead of them sitting down you know at a console playing first person shooter games or whatever they're doing these ar games that are fully immersive and interactive so it's pretty some pretty exciting stuff well i'm downloading ben and jerry's app as we speak <laughs> of course and, you uh, are and i will i will uh, i will give you a report on the Ben and Jerry's Scoop of Happiness application. Leo, I love working with you. You're so hands-on. You know? People say, oh, I'll download that when I get home, but you actually... Oh, no, no. I actually... Uh, well, I mean, you, you've, got my, you've got my interest. We have, you know, a lot of dairy farms around here. Poor, plus, by the way, you, met, you, you left out the most important thing. It has a countdown to free cone day. So you Ooh. make sure you don't miss your free Ben and Jerry's cone. I have participated in that free day before, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> Item two. Quick. All right. So uh, people who are listening in are probably familiar with Creative Commons. Uh, it's very popular on Flickr and other sites. So you can decide what type of licensing you want to have on your content that you put out there on the web, uh, allowing people to share it, give you uh, credit for that work. Well, Vimeo, which is a beautiful video sharing site, especially for people who love HD video, yeah. has just announced that they will have Creative Commons licensing uh, available so people can go in and license all of the videos that they upload so that they can have control over what people do with what videos and Vimeo is a very different environment than YouTube as I'm sure you're 
familiar yeah, with. Yeah, I like video, Vimeo a lot. I mean, it's, the community is smaller, but the content, I think, is quite good. Yeah, they have some really beautiful content on Vimeo. Again, I think people focus more on the high-quality videos where YouTube is kind of fun little clips and the video quality doesn't really matter. There's a lot of amateur filmmakers on Vimeo, right. so I can see where something like Creative Commons could be very helpful and beneficial for them to be able to have a little bit of control over what they're uploading there. I have to say, I guess and that's not available on YouTube. When you upload it, it's the YouTube license or nothing, right? I think yeah. that's the case. Yeah, Flickr so. allows yeah. Creative Commons, which is really nice. It sure does, and it's, it's been really popular on Flickr. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I see sort of a similar audience. You know, Flickr, there's a lot of amateur photographers there, and I think they love that they're able to uh, go in and control the licensing. So I think we'll have Big. the same yes. reaction on Vimeo. Although Vimeo still isn't that popular. I mean, I love the service, but I, I you know, there's, if, from my community, there's not tons of people who are using it, unfortunately. Yeah. You know that uh, YouTube has announced, and we were just looking at it on MacBreak Weekly earlier today, 4K support, which means I, I, this doesn't even make sense on streaming video on the Internet. But you can take a video with, a say, a RED camera, which is this. 4K is four times higher resolution than high def. It's hyper <laughs> Who would want that? <laughs> <laughs> no, not, no host wants that, I can tell you. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I keep saying every year I go to CE, that I go to CES, I see 4K video, and, uh, and I keep saying, forget 3D. You want realistic. You want video that makes you think you're looking at something that's actually happening. 4K is it. It's already been approved by Hollywood. Cameras exist. Now YouTube is throwing its clout behind it. The problem is if you want to watch 4K video, you have to have, first of all, a very high-resolution display... Oh, yeah. Because you have to have, what is it? Uh, uh, it's instead of 1080p, it's 2060 top to bottom. Instead of 1900 right and left, it's, uh, what would that be? Uh, 4,000. Four, it's four, I guess 4,000 by 20, uh, 2160, I guess, if I do the math right. Uh, yeah. You'd have to have a very high res display, and there's so much data coming at you. Oh, wow. that's what I was just thinking. They say you need four megabits uh, real time. Which is going to be really, I mean, you means you're going to have to have at least double that from your internet service provider to be able to even watch this in real time. Watch any of it. That's funny because, you know, what I always say to people, I love those little flip video cameras that are quite popular. They're less than $200 and you can shoot SD video or they, many of them are HD video. But I tell people who I know maybe don't have really great internet connection and aren't that familiar with content that, you know what, the SD video quality is fine for uploading to YouTube. I mean, people get so carried away with I agree. the you know, HD and megapixels on cameras, but the average person, you really don't need it. I'm thinking, uh, and uh, we don't do this yet. We're standard def. Uh, I, is Command N high def? No, it's not, but Chris has a very nice broadcast camera, which right. people think that it is high def, but it's that's, all about the lens. That's so a good, it's, it's about the quality of the camera and the quality of the lighting we just relit, and people think we're high def because we're 16.9. Yeah. The yeah, quality yeah. is good, but it's not. It's standard definition, which is probably 400, 480. P, um, but I am thinking that 720p is going to, which is kind of the low end of high def, is really going forward going to be kind of the standard you want to shoot in and and broadcast in. People can see 720p. Um, to me, that's the that's when we're when we're looking at what format we would go to next for Twitter. Now, of course, Alex Lindsay wants to do everything in 4K. <laughs> he's, that's yeah, how he's going to do everything in that break. <laughs> he's crazy. He's nuts. Uh, but I just got a. Uh, I just bought and Alex stole it. He's going to do some tests on it tomorrow. Panasonic uh, makes a SLR. It's a micro four thirds SLR called the GH1. There's hacked yeah. firmware for it from Tester 13 that lets you turn on high quality, high bit rate, high def video. So you can shoot 720p super high quality video on that thing. And I'm very intrigued yeah. by it all, you know? You, you know uh, that Texter video that I showed you? We shot that all in the Canon TTY. Yeah. Uh, which is like an eight hundred dollar camera. Yeah. I mean, and the quality is phenomenal. It's just amazing to me. I mean, obviously, people are going to want more than seven twenty p. Somebody in the chat room is mocking me, saying seven twenty p is the highest resolution you'll ever need. I'm not nuts. I'm not saying that. But I think going forward, that's going to be kind of a good mix of quality versus bandwidth usage, computer CPU capability, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I mean, at least yeah. for internet. Yeah, I totally. Agree I like seven twenty p. I I have to say it. It looks pretty darn good to me compared to other yep. internet video. All right, Vimeo. Well, let's see. What else? Uh, oh, yeah, this is kind of interesting. Chat I roulette. Chat Wait roulette a minute. In a while. Do I really want I this? Thought it was dead. You know, it's funny. I thought it was almost dead, and then it sort of, um, I guess they've had some problems over time, and there, there was, was it, I think, 
This is a this is chat roulette for the for the iPhone? Yeah. Was it approved? It's called iChatter. All right, let me try it. I have not tried it. I don't really want to try it. It's a free app (laughs) that uses the iPhone 4's front camera um, that allows you. That's appropriate. Yeah, I know. I just, chat roulette scares me because you never know what In this case, you call it the full frontal camera. The full frontal camera. Yeah. That's a good yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're, you know, for people who don't know what chat roulette is, we've talked about it on the show before where you randomly click next and next and you meet people on the internet who are sitting in front of their webcams. Unfortunately, it's mostly people flashing you. At least there's a big percentage of people who are flashing you, mostly men. <laughs> it's not kid friendly, but uh, now there is an iPhone app. Now, this is not from Mr. Chat Roulette. This is, no, no, this no, is a no. copy. Yeah, this is someone else has created this application, as far as I understand. Okay. And I guess Mr. Chat Roulette at one point was trying to create uh, or cut, change something to the existing service that would actually filter out, out body parts that people were trying to uh, reveal, inappropriate yeah, body parts. He just parts. was telling people he was doing that. He must know that that's the main reason people use Chat Roulette, right? Yeah, but I think he was trying to figure out a way to, you know, sort of get more commercial interest and um, change the tool so it was something a little more appropriate for young people. Well, actually, that's an interesting question because um, I just assume, oh, yeah, people are using it kind of as a porno thing. But maybe it, it really isn't the case. Maybe that people would use chat roulette, as you say, as a way to kind of bridge cultures in the world if it weren't so porn focused, right? I think that's true. I mean, there were so many young people on chat roulette and at the end of the day, they can go to any site they want. Let's face it, to find porn if that's what they're interested in. But, you know, maybe they're not. Maybe they just want to be able to meet people from different parts of the world. They think it's cool, sing songs with them. Remember the guy, Merton? Yeah, that was neat. Yeah. That was kind of fun. I mean, when you see things like that, you think, wow, this technology is amazing. Imagine in a classroom, if you could randomly talk with students all over the world and uh, didn't have to worry about uh, naked body parts, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Not the naked body parts. <laughs> sweet, man. Really sweet. <laughs> well, I'm downloading it right now, and we'll do the first live demonstration of oh, iChatter. Oh, you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> you're so any, scary. Any minute now, I'll just do it like this. I'll hide it behind my hand. Yeah, you got to hide and then, like, move your hand off. <laughs> whoa, okay. whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, or let's take a break. Off. We got some more uh, links to come. And, of course, our guest in just a little bit, we're going to talk to Joe Fernandez about clout. And I was checking, and I actually have a very high clout rating, so I'm liking this yeah. better. I like it better than I did before. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about our friends at Citrix, the folks who do that fabulous GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting is the software that lets you hold online meetings. If you're uh, bored to death with teleconferencing, and sometimes you know you, you, you're, you're, you're on a phone, a teleconference call, and, uh, and you can just tell the other person's doing chat roulette or something because they're just not paying attention. It's like, hello? <laughs> Wake I, up. I, you, you know that feeling where you're talking to somebody, but they just kind of, it's, it's, it's funny. I, I think we have a sixth sense for it. That they're just not there. It they're just, nearly there. They're nearly there. They're going, well, uh, yeah, what? No, not with, not with GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting takes a, a phone call and brings it to life. It gives it, makes it something visual, something engaging, something cool. It's very easy. You can try it free right now by going to GoToMeeting.com slash night. G-O-T-O meeting dot com slash N-I-G-H-T and it'll take you just a minute to install it. In fact, before I'm done talking, you'll have it installed. Now, the next time you're on that boring conference call, fire up GoToMeeting. Or the next time you're called upon for business travel, you know the average cost of a business trip is a thousand dollars according to American Yikes. Expense Express? <laughs> Actually, I should name it American Expense. That's a better name. <laughs> it's more expensive. And much more. $49 a month for GoToMeeting for as many meetings as you want, as long as you want, as often as you want. Your meeting starts in sequence. Everyone sees your desktop on their computer screen. Everyone can follow along with you. I love GoToMeeting. We use it all the time. I invite you to use it for free right now. GoToMeeting.com slash N-I-G-H-T. And don't forget to check out the iPad app. That really makes GoToMeeting uh, perfect for anywhere. GoToMeeting.com slash night. We thank them so much for their support of Net at Night. Amber MacArthur, Leo Laporte, we're talking about the new Net. What, didn't we want to change the name of the show? What were you th- I know. What I keep you bugging thinking? you by email, but what, I know what, you're... What, what, were we, what were we thinking of? I don't know. I think I threw you a couple of names, but I just thought since we focused so much on Let's do social it. media and new things Let's that are happening... It. We've changed it once before. It was inside the Net. I think this week in social media, I just pulled that, just thinking of what, everything that you do. Yeah. 
this Twism. week in social media. Weird? Twism. You know, the only reason I'm afraid to hitch my start to social media is I feel like it's a little bit of the flavor of the month. So. Yeah, yeah. But we could, I think something. I feel like we should change the name because first of all, it's not at night anymore. Second of all, I feel like net is dated. And third, we love to change and, you know, mix things up. Yeah, maybe we should do so, something. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about it. You know, Brian Brushville wants, wants to call NSFW the internet, the podcast. But So that's taken. Okay. That's good. <laughs> but maybe if any of our listeners or anyone who's watching has any ideas for the show name, they should let us know and uh, we can play around with uh, mixing it up a little. Why not? How would they get a hold of you? Do I tell you what, you can give, I can give out Leo at twit.tv. Should we do yeah. that? Do you have Amber at twit.tv? No, Let's I don't. Let's get that. Ken, Ken, Ken's going to get that for you. He's, he's giving me a thumbs up right now. Really? Who's yeah. Ken? <laughs> who are all these Ken, people? Who is Ken? Ken, who are you? Ken, well, you knew that Colleen went to Google, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Colleen's, Ken's the new Colleen. Ken's the new Colleen. Although okay. he doesn't look as good in a dress, I'll be honest. Yeah, I but can see But he does, that. you know, the, the pumps uh, that Colleen left behind do fit pretty well. So. I don't need to know what goes on in the quick <laughs> right, Leo? I just show up for the show and that's We it. have a lot of new staff. I think we've, uh, uh, I think the words that uh, our CEO, Lisa Kensel, used, we've blown up the payroll, I think is what she said. Wow. But we've got Tom Merritt now, anchors uh, right after this show. He does tech news today, every Monday through Friday. Uh, Sarah Lane is uh, producing iPad Today and a new a show called Green Tech Today that we'll be launching in the That's next great. week or two. Uh, we've got uh, Becky Worley is joining us uh, at least part-time, uh, not only to co-host Tech News Today, but to help us with uh, production. Uh, we're going to announce that pretty soon. Who else did Who else did we hire? We've got Burke. We've got John. We've got, I mean, we've got a lot of people in here. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, I, 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 I'm just, you know, I'm just plugging along. I, uh, <laughs> Leo, you need a vacation then. You have all these people who can I'm going to take one in three weeks. I'm so. going to be gone for really? uh, like 10 days or something. Where are you going? Or you don't have to tell we're us, dropping We're dropping Abby off at college. Oh, are you driving? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, Virgin, Virgin America. Uh, yeah. We're going to fly to uh, JFK and then drive okay. up uh, the Hudson River. She's going to sc uh, school in the Hudson River Valley called Bard. So we're going to drive up there. She her school. We we'll leave August fifth. Her school starts August seventh. We'll drop her off. She has made a deal. We've signed a contract that says fifteen minutes after dropping her off, we will not. We will leave campus and will not return for at least oh two God. months. <laughs> oh, Leo, you're scaring me about my future. Get ready. You know that sweet little baby you've got there. Yes. Wait till he's twelve. Maybe 13. Oh. No, he'll be nice. I hope so. You know, Maybe boys are different. You, you know that your mom and dad are just can't wait. They've probably already said this. Oh, I'm sure. We can't you know, wait every, till he's... Every time I change a diaper, I think they're giggling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Google, uh, Google launches rich text signatures. Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, now within your Gmail account, you can very easily make a rich text signature. Now, you could do this before with a little hacking. If you had some text skills, you could go in and mix it up. So you could add things like your logo, you know, links that worked and all this type of content. But now Google has made it really easy to do this. And so you can go into the settings within Google and customize your signature very uh, simply. Um, also, what's kind of cool, and I do this, I have all of my many email addresses funneling to my Gmail account. So now you can actually add a unique signature from uh, those multiple accounts. From It's based on your from line. So wherever you send that email from, whatever address, you can have a specific signature attached to that account if you have multiple businesses or profiles or whatever you do. So uh, again, just a tiny little tweak, but I thought I'd mention it because there are tons of Gmail users. I absolutely love the service and uh, again they've just made it easier for the average person to do this they say that this has been like one of the number one I things know. people have been asking for which kind of surprises me me too i'm really surprised people asked for this and i never really thought about it that much i guess but uh you know i think it's fun for people who want to uh, have something a little more visually interesting i still like plain text but maybe i'm old school <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was kind of deprecated to do that kind of thing. Where the uh, the the RTF or HTML emails, RTF is safe. HTML is risky because then you can embed uh, you know malicious codes in there. But but correct me if I'm wrong, Ken Shepherdson, he's our web guru as well. RTF yeah. is is not you can't embed anything dangerous in RTF. And most most he's going I don't know most. <laughs> 
Remind me why we hired you again? No. no I'm just <laughs> I don't, I don't know. He's giving me the universal I don't know gesture, which is like you shrug and your hands go like this. I don't know. Uh, he, uh, he uh, what was I going to say? RTF. Uh, <laughs> I have I have a I have a very elaborate CSS signature that I made. Uh -huh. That I mean that's. HTML plus because it uses weird characters like for my phone number it has a little uh, phone character and you know it uses the uh, Omnicode phone character and then it has a little pen for the email address and it's got all this and the links are hot and it's got all this CSS in it I don't know why I did this I created this very elaborate and I the problem is you can't send it to anybody yeah because they go what the hell is this crap at the end of your message yeah and i'm afraid rtf would be the same text is good that's why we like text everybody yeah. can read it i agree with you but you know what some people want to add some color and it's just like people if you remember people used to add all those little like uh you know icons and everything yeah to let's not have I mean, dancing bears in our signature but some people like to mix it up a little bit leo i noticed on one of your emails it's coming from the ipad are you using the ipad a lot these days i do yeah now one of the reasons uh, I use in my signature, I do on the iPad and iPhone, I do say this is from the iPad or the iPhone to explain why it's short, cryptic, uh, okay. and misspelled. Mm -hmm. So just so you know that I did this uh, with my toes practically is, yeah. how, is the reason. Yeah. You know what I started doing, Leo? And I don't get me wrong, I still have not reached Inbox Zero. My inbox is a disaster. I used to be so good, but the past month since the book launched, it's been overwhelming. And now I, I can't even manage anything. So if I want to get through a lot of emails, I actually do them on my BlackBerry because I'm not inclined to type a lot. And <laughs> so right. I will just write quick little messages. Right. And it's the fastest way I can power through, you know, 20 emails at a time. Exactly. I think it was... Um it was Kevin Rose that uh, t told me about two sentences or three sentences. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We mentioned we this, didn't we? That. Yeah. It's, uh, let me see if I've got this right. I think it's the yeah. The number I two. Know. It was España. Anyway, the idea was uh, that you uh, would send an email of no more than two sentences. Yeah. And then include the a link in the, uh, in the email itself to the two sentences website or three they had three and four and five sentences saying the reason this is so short is because this is my new plan is to not send long emails i kind of like that idea i like that idea the shorter the better sometimes i'm not even signing off on emails anymore like it's just really? getting too out of control really yeah i just i just had as as and I'm, I'm curious what your thought is and then we're going to get joe on i apologize yeah, yeah. For, we got to get joe on but um i love this conversation i had um for a long time maybe the last year or so an automatic responder on my main email address that said, thank you so much for emailing. I want, I want you to know that the message has been received, but mm -hmm. I'm getting hundreds of ma messages an hour. I can't respond them to all. I promise you that I've hired my sister, Eva, to, to, to look at these. I promise that either I or Eva will read your message, and we will endeavor to respond, but we are not able to respond to every message. If you're looking for help especially, here's some sort resources. Just kind of this responder. And I had that on for a year, uh, it certainly cut down the number of messages I got, but it also annoyed people, especially people who were like you, legitimately mailing me. And I try to add people to, not, not I don't mean to say legitimately, every email is legitimate, um, uh, people I know and work with that I expect email from. Yeah. I have one email box for everybody. Uh, I, I just turned it off the other day because um, it was annoying so many people. I don't know. What do you think about an autoresponder? Okay. Is that I actually, this is a really good conversation. We could go on forever. I am about to do this because you know what, Leo? I think just based on conversations people have had with me about trying to get in touch with you and they think that maybe you're just ignoring their email. If for those people who think you're just being rude, I think it's more annoying for them who, when nothing. they don't get any, nothing. So this way they get something. Me, yeah. Who knows that, okay, he's busy. He's dealing with it. If you want to But does the someone, autoresponder bother you if you... Uh, no, you know, I just delete it. It's you know. Easy to do. You okay. just go through and delete it. If people are, get bothered by it, tell them not to email you, maybe. No, that's a little harsh. Sorry, I have a cold, so I'm, obviously I'm hostile. Um, but, uh, <laughs> You're I'm not Amber, a cold hostile and the word Amber do not ever go together. Come on. <laughs> this, if this is your hostile, ooh, stand back. I'm Sometimes I'm I know, I know, I know. Okay, I'll calm down a little bit. No, you're right, though. You're not I don't hostile. get hostile. But, Leo, I will say, if you've ever emailed Gary Vaynerchuk, have you ever emailed no, him? No, let me send him something. Send him an email. What is his see address? What um, Gary? Yeah, it's, let's see. I think he has it public for everybody. Um, I think it's Gary V at winelibrary.com. Right. Um, now everybody's going to email. Oh my gosh, he's going to hate me. But 
So if you email him, there should be a reply that comes back that basically says, you know, he, check out this link, which is a video of him explaining that he gets a lot of email. He really appreciates your um, email messages, but here's who you need to contact based on speaking events, uh, you know, I interviews with the media, whatever it might be, book requests. Um, and he goes through this list. It's a really generous, kind video that you can watch if you want to click on the link or just oh, get Maybe I should make a video. I like it. I think I'm going to do that because you know what? Most of our emails, as we know from Merlin Mann and Inbox Zero, can be filtered to you know certain destinations if you need to deal with this, this, or this. I mean, there's still that chunk that you probably need to answer. I have but like 150 rules in my uh, filters. I mean, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, huge, it must be crazy. Huge. But at least if you could say to people, if you have a media request, contact this person right, right away. If it's a speaking event, if it's, you know, whatever it might be and get those, you know, five or six chunks of emails to be dealt with by someone else immediately. You don't even have to worry about following up. At least those people that those are like money making really important, you know, things for you. Um, and then for other people emailing you, then you can just let them know that, you know, you have a lot of email, you do what you can. If they need to, what I say to people all the time is, listen, if you really need to reach me, try me on multiple platforms or keep bugging me. Like I, you know, eventually I'll probably answer you. <laughs> Eventually, I'll probably answer you. I'm going to put that in my auto response. <laughs> eventually, 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 I'll, I'll probably, maybe <laughs> not, maybe. Eventually, I'll probably I, ignore you. You know what, Leo? If you, if someone really needs to reach you and it's really important, they can find you in different places. If your email's really packed, or you know, we're so accessible right. these days, right? Well, somebody sent me a note, a very angry note, saying uh, had some good stuff in the note, but at the beginning it says, "Why the hell do you not publish an email address?" And I thought, I guess I should, because people re reasonably have some response to something we talked about. There should be a way for them. But really, it's it, the answer is very simple. Uh, I can't handle the uh, volume. Yeah. I don't publish it because, I mean, it's not that I don't want to hear from people. I do, and I believe me, I do in many, very many ways. We have, you know, Buzz and Twitter and all that stuff. But I just, I can't handle the volume. And it, by, by publishing an email address, there's kind of a unwritten compact that you will somehow read and respond, right? Yeah. Oh, I agree. I know. So I don't think anyway, that's a long way of explaining. I don't think there's anything right wrong with the auto reply. I think it's almost a polite way to deal with the, you know, all of the emails you get and people who get annoyed by it, you know, hopefully they start to understand. <laughs> Somebody said, Web887 said, what if it's a matter of life and death? If it's a matter of life and death, you probably have my phone number. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of you do, actually. That's another problem. I accidentally <laughs> give out my phone number at least once a month. All right, let's get uh, let's get Joe on the line because uh, let's talk about clout. Yeah, Cl it's clout with a K, right? It's clout with a K. They call themselves the standard of standard for influence. So a place where you can get influence reports about certain people online, and uh, people sign up. You can become a member of the site. If you're a company, you can go in and find out how influential someone might be. So this is a topic of conversation. I think that is getting more interesting on the web. You know, it's not necessarily about the number of followers you have anymore, but your level of interaction and influence. And apparently, we don't have sufficient influence because Joe Fernandez is not answering his phone. Ah. That's okay. Oh, no. We're, we don't have much time left anyway. I do want to point out, though, that according to KLOUT, and they do tell you how they figured this out. Have you have you read how they figured this out? Because I'm not sure why I, I am supposedly have such clout. But I am, apparently, I'm right now. I am apparently the highest possible clout level. It's, uh, really? I've got, well, it said, okay, clout score 76 is probably on a base of, of 100, so it isn't really. Um, but it says... Clout classification, which they should spell with a K if they really want to be consistent. Yeah. Leo Laporte is a celebrity. You can't get any more influential than this. People hang on your every word. Ha! And wow. share your content like no other. You're probably famous in real life. Ha! And your fans going to go to your head. Isn't simply it? <laughs> can't get enough. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big deal actually. But look <laughs> You're at this. Too good for me now. Look at this. Okay, influenced by Mashable, Jason, Baratunde, Jay Rosen, and Pud. That's true. I follow all of them. Influencer of my daughter. That's a lie. Vark. Remember we in, we interviewed Vark.com? They got bought by Google, by the way. Remember that? Yeah. I'm apparently influenced by my own scale. You know, my, my scale tweets. Apparently that's a big influence on me. Not. Hmm. Kiwi nerd, I'd agree. She's one of our chatters, and I am absolutely influenced by her. And then a dead guy, Soupy Sales. So I'm doing pretty good. You're doing pretty well. But I am kind of amazed that I uh, that I have such high clout. I, so how do they figure this out? 
I think it's just analyzing all of your interaction with other people and how many times you get retweeted, the um, level of, uh, you know, uniqueness of the retweeters as far as their own traffic. So um, it seems like a pretty complex system that they have in place. And I, like I said, I've no, I'm noticing more and more people paying attention to it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, you know, I think you can only take these things so far, right? I think, as we said, influence is in the eye of the beholder. Now, it, by the way, really I know now why Joe can't join us. According to his clout page, he's just trying to get enough beans to make a burrito right now. So that's going to keep him pretty busy. He's having burritos? <laughs> Apparently. Let me keep, we'll keep trying. We'll keep that's okay. We, we're, we'll, we'll keep trying. I'm going to try again in a second. But before we do that, I want to mention Audible. He owes us anyway. clout now, Leo. He's yeah. Apparently, we, we don't have enough clout to get him on Skype. <laughs> but in every other respect, we've got clout. Uh, audible.com let me tell you about that a great site for people who love to listen we know you love to listen you're after all listening to us and uh, if you've filled up your uh, your iPod or your iPhone or your Zoom or your Kindle with i with podcasts you might want to take a look at audiobooks i tell you what i the more i use audible the more in love with audible i am they've just released their audible for iphone app Amber, this this might make you move to an uh, to an iPhone or to an Android phone. They don't have it for BlackBerry yet, although I've got to think that since they've done it for Android and and uh, or, uh, and uh, Android Apple, all the way, Leo. I'm I'm almost there. Are you an Android girl? <laughs> well, I've I've been testing it one of their phones, and I love it. Which so one are you have, using? Um, I was using the Motorola Milestone, which is the equivalent of the Droid. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Uh, the Droid X, I presume, will come out soon in Canada. That's that looks like a great one. That's the Hummer of Android phones. Anyway, they do have an Android app. They have now a, a, a iPhone app, which I L O V E love. It is so spectacular. So here's the deal with the iPhone app: you can um, you can um, put all of your library on it. This is the first time I've ever seen this on an iPhone. You know, I have over 400 titles in my uh, library. I've been a member for since 2001. All of the titles that I've ever bought are available. I, I can see a list of them and then pick any of them to download and put them on the iPhone so that I can listen to them. This is the first time the iPhone has had wireless Wi-Fi syncing. You can't do it for music. You can't do it with iTunes, but you can do it with Audible. It is fantastic. So now I'm never without an audio book. Hundreds of books in my library. That's the other thing I like about Audible. You, the books are, are the, yours forever, you know? So you can download. This is one I've been meaning to listen to, Einstein Unabridged. So if I want it, I want to add it to my phone, I just press the little download button here, and boom, it starts downloading into my phone. And I can start listening almost immediately, even before it's fully downloaded. They've got little badges and all sorts of stuff. This is really well, sweet. Free for I the iPhone. I have to tell Chris about this. Wow. Is he, he an iPhone user? Well, he is. And, you know, I think one of the reasons he downloads tons of podcasts and we do so many road trips. So all we do is listen to either audiobooks or podcasts when we're driving. But he's the one who maintains all of the media in the family. Um, but he would love this. And uh, Android uh, has it, too. So when you, when you move to your milestone or whatever, there's, uh, there, you go to the Google groups for the beta because it's, no, it's not out yet. They're still in beta on the Android, which is funny because it came out before the iPhone version. I, just, I have to say, this is also made for iPhone 4. It sits in the background so you can continue to listen to your books while you're doing other things on the iPhone. Uh, this blows me away. Another great reason to become an Audible fanatic. I want you to go to audible.com slash night. You can get a free book. When you download that app, you get a, f a free samples of a number of books. So you get an idea of what it sounds like. I am just such a fan. You know what I listen to and uh, love, and I, I'm going to listen to the rest of them. The Stieg Larsson trilogy. They call it the Millennium Trilogy. It started with The Girl with the, the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was followed uh, by The Girl uh, Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, and then The Girl Who Played with Fire. You know... You would like these. Have you read these yet? No, but I keep seeing them everywhere in bookstores. You know what I like about them? The, first of all, the hero, there's two heroes. There's a, a male journalist, but the other hero, who's really the real hero, is is a hacker, a 25-year-old female hacker. She's the girl in the titles. And she is so powerful and so awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of those books that I think... Is, is all about uh, empowerment for, for women. It's, it's just fantastic. And in fact, the first uh, um, book of the trilogy um, is really, you know, uh, well, I don't want to give anything away. you got to read it. It's a murder mystery. It's a little graphic at times, so i got to warn you, this isn't for the kids. But if you love mysteries, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, 
is a great place to start. But Audible has them all. Best sellers from the New York Times and others. Fiction, nonfiction. I listen to a lot of history, sci-fi and fantasy. The World is Your Oyster. 75,000 plus titles. You can listen on your iPhone, iPod, Zoom, Android phones. Um, you know, pretty much any portable device. Several, I think it's 500 uh, portable devices now. Give it a try. We know you're going to love it. Ooh, Jerry Pornell's Footfall is just out. Okay, well, I'm going to get Chris to download that for our drive back to Toronto because like it's 16 it. hours. <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah. Are you driving back from PEI? Well, oh, yeah, we yeah. Do, we're here for the rest of July. So um, we drove down. It was just easier with Connor because we have so much stuff to bring. And uh, it's kind of nice. We did make a trip out of it. We took a couple of days to get here. And yeah, we like road trips. Leo, you know that. This is perfect for your road trip. Yeah, In fact, as Connor gets older... When the kid, we went on a road trip uh, when the kids were, you know, I think eight and ten, or maybe ten and twelve, and uh, we drove to um, the Grand Tetons in uh, in my Montana or Wyoming, I guess Wyoming, and it was a several day drive, and we got a number of great Audible books, juveniles, so that the, you know the kids would get them and like them. I think Bud Nut Buddy was one, Holes. Uh, we got four or five of them, but they were good books that we enjoyed listening. So we would listen in the car instead of the DVD player. Which is yeah. a is a so isolated experience. We would all listen in the car to these books, and then we talk about. I still, I'm. You could tell I'm still nostalgic about it. It was so much fun. Another good use for Audible. I think you're going to love it. Audible. dot com slash night. Do yourself a favor. Give it a try. Well, I guess we're okay. gonna. I guess we're gonna punt our uh, guest. Unfortunately, we'll have him on next week. Time. I'm very curious about how they calculate clout. I know, me too. I can't wait to have him on, and yeah. uh, I'm sure he has good reason for not being on the show. So he's collecting beans for his burrito. It's 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 okay. <laughs> it's Go okay. It's all good. Anyway, we have some fun stuff to uh, talk about. Our and, video uh, of the week. We gotta always end with a video of the week, and this one is. Well, it's interesting. What's the story behind this? Okay, so you might be familiar with the Old Spice guy. He's been doing these amazing I'm on a horse. YouTube videos. Yeah. Yes, and he is uh, has no shirt on. He's standing outside the shower in the bathroom, and he's just doing these wonderful sort of fun videos about Old Spice. Well, now he's not just doing the videos in a professional uh, manner for uh, promoting Old Spice. Part of the campaign that they're doing is that he's replying to influential bloggers or people who so ask brilliant. questions online. Now we did, we did, character. and I have to say, I think that we stimulated this because I don't know if you remember, but I fell in love with this mo with this commercial right after the Super Bowl in January. Yep. It aired the day after or something. And I said, this is so brilliant. And then Tony and I had a bit and the debate and we got the guys who wrote it, the copywriters who wrote the original, I'm on a ho hello ladies. Does your oh. fellow look like me? So we interviewed the creatives, the guys who wrote it and directed oh, the, cool. the and we and we asked him. It's on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash twit, just go through it. Okay. We've got the whole interview. And what I did is I had the, the 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 commercial up and we walked through it step by step. How'd you do that? How'd you do that? How'd you do that? And they were great. Widen and Kennedy is an amazing sure. agency. And then they did another one. There's a new one just out uh, where he like lands on a motorcycle and some <laughs> I know. It's so fun. I think it's it's partly because Wyden and Kennedy is such a good agency, but I have to think that they noticed how many people we got hundreds of thousands of people watched that YouTube recreation of it. Oh, sure. So I'm gonna say I had a little clout in this one. Yeah, no, it's great. And so he he's done a bunch of responses. To His name is online. Isaiah Mustafa, by the way. One yeah, of the best, admit it, best looking guys you ever saw, right? He's very good looking. Um, I think he is, uh, I think he's taken, though, I have to say. I saw an interview with him on Oprah, believe it or not. And, oh, he's, uh, he's been on every show. A ton, a ton of attention. Their Old Spice Twitter account is hilarious. And yeah, look at him. He's, got, he's like, where, he's a lumberjack. <laughs> well, Leo, look at his location and his little bio. On I'm in a bathroom. I'm the man <laughs> your man could smell like. Twelve thousand followers. Let's let's uh, show him how much clout Ned and Knight yeah, has. Yeah, he needs me. Yeah, I'm gonna he follow more followers him. than that. Yeah, I just. He's a him he's a football. Here. He was a football player, and uh, the the uh, the guys at Widen and Kennedy said he's a brilliant actor, which you could tell because he doesn't miss a beat as these weird things are happening. They said it took seventy four takes for the first one, the I'm on a horse one. Uh, and he did it perfectly 74 times. I mean, he's just... He's hilarious. Yeah, he's really good. Oh, even all these responses that he's doing to people are so, so funny. So what is going he's on? Okay, so he's just responding to people who are asking him questions on YouTube. Now, the best example that I found, as you mentioned, Ke our friend Kevin Rose is sick. And uh, I didn't pneumonia. know he had pneumonia, Kevin, but that's feel terrible. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, 
I guess he might have written something to the Old Spice guy. <laughs> and the one. Old Spice guy did a video back to him. Wait a minute, look at this one. Guy Kawasaki, thanks for spreading the word about oh, yeah, my video responses. Through. Is there a girl, Kawasaki? <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? So is there a video? So each of these has a YouTube link. What is he doing? Is he sitting in the studio recording these? I guess so. I mean, he's on the same. He's one for like Jason Calacanis. Set. Jason, how could you get over your aces being cracked at the World Series of Poker? Wow. He's so random. One for Ryan Seacrest. Kevin oh, yeah. Rose. So here it is. Hello again, Kevin. Because you're a highly valued member of male society. Let's see the video here. Wait a minute. Hold on. I've got to turn on the audio and... And make Isaiah as big as he deserves to be on a screen. It's true. Come on, now you're a gal. Is is is, is this guy like a catnip for women? He's pretty good looking. Yeah, <laughs> catnip for women. Kevin I don't Rose. know. I don't like. That's just. Wait a minute. This is great. First of all, it's kind of my worlds are colliding here. Listen to this. Kevin Rose tweets. Holy sh! Asterisk T. Best get well video ever from the Old Spice Man. Hello again, Kevin. You are a highly valued member of the male society, and it is the utmost importance that you get well and continue progressing our sex for the future men babies. Get well, Kevin. The future men babies need you. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Leo, the one I sent you, though, is before that one. This is it's a response funnier. to Kevin's response. Yeah. So they've it's obviously got Isaiah in the studio, like, right now, like, as we speak. Oh, yeah. He's in the studio, and they're watching the Twitter stream. I can't imagine how much this must cost, Old Spice. I can't imagine either. But he's obviously, he's like doing video responses, video tweet responses. Yeah, the one I sent you, he goes on about, um, he, at the end of it, I don't want to give it away if you're going to play it, but uh, he says something along the lines of, Kevin, I'm going to talk to you in the language you understand. And he starts going zero, one, zero, one, zero. <laughs> he says, Kevin's smarter than I am. It's really, really funny. Yeah, we'll play this as we go out. I want to thank All you, right. uh, Amber MacArthur, as always, even though you've got a cold for it's taking okay. some time to spend time with us. Amber is the host of a great video podcast called Command N. You can get it at commandn.tv. You can also um, uh, find her, where else, uh, on CP24 doing CP24, her Web Nation. Web Nation uh, my show. book, of course, uh, which just came out a month ago now. So at powerfriending.com, you can pick up a copy of that. I think it's 16 bucks on Amazon, so not a bad deal. You must, and... you must get it. It is a must-read. It's a must read. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess ambermac.com. Everything's kind of on there. Uh, Amber, always a pleasure. Next week, we'll see if we can get our clout guy on. And meanwhile, uh, all I had to do, you know, Kevin, just, you know, all he had to do was dig this, of course. And, and this, oh, yeah. it's already got 1,899 digs. Here is the old spice guy with Hello, the Kevin. original How are you? Get Well. Feeling better, I hope. Thanks, Leo. Thank you, Amber. We'll see you next time Hello, on Net Kevin. at Night. How are you? Feeling better, I hope. I personally have never had a fever because my body is 98% muscle and muscles can't get sick. The 1% of my body that isn't muscle is my ears. They're made of cartilage. But I did some research and it doesn't look like you can get a fever in your ears, which I think we both can agree is a glorious thing. That being said, although I'm clearly winning in the physical department, you seem to have the edge intellectually because you are a genius at the internet. <laughs> Can you imagine if your smart brain could team up with my strong muscle body and wildly handsome face parts? No, you can't. I can't. No one can. Because if anyone tried to imagine that, their brain would explode, and that's just not healthy. Thanks again, Kevin. Or in your genius smart computer language. One zero zero one zero one one zero one zero 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 one one zero one.